Welcome back to Market on Close. Of course, the story of the day is inflation, and we need some more thoughts. Bringing in one of the heavy hitters, Mr. Andrew Bringer, one of my favorite bond analysts, head of international fixed income securities and Alliance. Andy, thanks for being here. Thanks for jumping on this afternoon. Oliver, always a pleasure to be with you. Appreciate that, sir. All right, so well, we got the dollar ripping. We got the two-year ripping. Should we be talking hikes instead of cuts? We shouldn't be talking hikes instead of cuts, but I tell you, Jay Powell has gotten nothing good for him lately. He's been looking for any reason of which to try and ease, and the numbers just will not give it to him. Mm. From strong employment to higher inflation to a, a strong you know, economy, he just can't get any, any room of which to ease. And he'd really like to get a couple of eases in before the election becomes an issue. And he's not going to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, when there's no easing, when does that turn in to tightening again, Andy? Should we be having that conversation? Absolutely not. There's Tell no way. I mean, e even even now with Fed funds, you got to remember what Fed funds are. They're five and three eighths, five and a half. I mean, you're talking inflation still. Even in the worst numbers of, of CPI, you're talking three and a half. There's no reason to be tightening here. If anything, I, I still think you, you need to cut. But it's just he, he can't get any any cover of which to cut. You know, the this, the PCE number is the one that they look at. And even if that grinds up towards 3 percent, there's no justification for higher rates. And I think higher rates will just you just cause all kinds of turmoil. And I don't believe it's in the Fed's path right now for higher rates. Andy, why do you say we need to cut? All the GDP expectations have been ramping upwards. We just saw the first expansion of manufacturing, right, in years. How can we need to cut? Why is that your baseline? Oliver, my baseline is we need to cut. And, of course, I don't have much justification today with a hot CPI number, but inflation has come down dramatically. And as I just said, PCE is the number we look at. And that's roughly about 2.5%. It had been running you know, on a three-month and six-month basis under two, but that's much higher now. And, you know, there's just no reason to have two and a half to three percent real rates. So I believe that it's going to come down. It's not about the economy. And I do believe the economy is going to weaken. But boy, there again, I, 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 can't, I can't justify that either. Mm. The employment number is very strong, but I will say I believe a big chunk of that employment number is immigration. And I think that's a good thing. But nonetheless, I do believe that rates are too high. Look, the deficit is very high, and the amount the Treasury is going to have to pay to fund this is going to be reaching, you know, a trillion dollars, and and that's just too high. It's it's already higher than the uh, than the military uh, budget. So I think we need to get things lower. And I did see one thing you didn't talk about in your previous session mm -hmm. is the fact that the Fed minutes. The Fed's going to reduce the number of of Treasuries that they're going to let run off. I believe starting in June, they're going to release, they're going to drop it in half. Mm. And and, I, I, and I'm trying to figure out whether that's good for the curve or bad for the curve. But I think it's good for the curve. That means the treas that means the Fed is going to be holding longer treasuries. Mm. And, and I think that's going to be a positive thing for the curve and for interest rates. And you think we should see some steepening out in a positive way? Can we get that? Because I thought when it comes to the curve, we were rooting for the, the bear steepener when we're selling off because of growth expectations, Andy. Can we get that back? Because we got that halfway through last year, and that seems like the best outcome. Well, you know, very, very much so. So but we'll have to wait and see. They, they, at this point, they've given us too little details of which to really determine, but they keep saying that they want to cut the amount of treasuries that run off, and they're talking about from all the analysis I read this afternoon about cutting it in half. So that would mean it would go from sixty billion a month to thirty billion a month. They're going to leave mortgages alone because mortgages aren't aren't even reaching their cap anyway. And and I believe that's going to be good for the. It's going to slow the reduction of the Fed balance sheet, and I think it's going to step up. Look, Oliver, one of the other things you pointed out: higher interest rates is leading to a higher dollar. And of course, higher commodity prices, you've already pointed that out. But a higher dollar is not good for Japanese buyers. Hmm. And, you know, we saw some reports today that the Japanese are going to have to start selling treasuries of which to support the yen versus the dollar. So we really need to get interest rates lower. We need to get the dollar lower. And I believe that's in our best benefit. And Oliver, this is not an argument I'm going to win today. You know, you look and <laughs> see what the next things are. Obviously, we have PPI tomorrow. Well, we have the inflation numbers on Friday. 
the good the next big thing in my opinion is the jefferson speech next week where he's going to be talking wow. a bit the monetary policy and then of course the pce number at the end of the month okay but it, it's going to be ugly oliver and even though if we do bounce tomorrow on, on in the 30-year auction uh tell i mean you you i didn't think 10 years could get below 451 and I think they're going out 456. Were you surprised by today's could... auction, Andy, that nobody bought after our huge morning sell-off? Oliver, they're all nervous. And they, they just <laughs> don't know what the next leg is. And, it, you know, it, 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 everyone's short. This is the first time in a long time that everyone went into this number short, and they made money. I mean, Oliver, look at the number of people that bought three years yesterday. They probably have somewhere between a four to $500 million loss. I mean, two years, three years, rather, are probably back 27, 28 basis points in one day. Terrible. Andy, real fast, only got like 40 seconds, but it seems like you view the inflation bounce as being short term and maybe some of the strength in the economy being limited as well. What would make you change your mind? That's going to be very hard for me to change my mind <laughs> because I'm, stuck, I'm kind of stuck in the mud. I really think the economy is slowing, and, and so far the numbers haven't borne that out. I think inflation has come down dramatically, and I really am looking for much lower rates, but I'm wow. obviously not going to get it. We're down to two rate cuts for this year, and we'll be lucky to get that at this point in time. But Oliver, once Paul gets uh, gets some some cover, he's going to ease, and he's going to ease quickly, he wants to do much it. more than markets anticipate. All right. Thank you, Andy, very much. Appreciate your take, as always. Mr. Brenner is the head of International Fixed Income Securities at Nat Alliance Securities.